Hello everyone, my name is Michael McCann, and in this video I'm going to show you how to model cathedral-style arches in Blender. This type of environment is really common in movies and in video games, and this model in particular is ideal for video games because it's very low poly, but it still has a fair amount of detail and it can be modeled in just a few minutes. So now I'm just going to jump into Blender. I'm going to start by deleting the default cube and adding a circle. Now I'm going to take the vertice count down to 8. Now I'm going to tap into edit mode and just basically what I'm going to do here is start creating that little bit of detail that is typically around the, the base and the top of pillars. They're just, um, I'm just going to scale and and extrude to create little rims or or just grooves around the end just for that extra bit of detail. It's probably a good idea to look at some photo references before getting started. But I've modeled these a few times so I'm not going to bother. Now I'm going to select everything and hit shift D and rotate it 180 degrees and I'll move it up on Z. I'm going to be applying my materials as I go. There will only be two materials, um, and it's just easier to apply them now rather than go back and select the individual faces later. Now I'm going to bridge these two edge loops and scale it in a little. So now I'm going to add my mirror modifier. and then separate them. Now I'm just going to select the top edge loop and extrude up and scale. I'll do this a few times. It'll be different depending on how narrow your hallway is. Um, for this one, I don't think it'll take more than six extrusions. Yeah, I think probably one more should do it. Now I'm just going to select everything and, and make sure clipping is checked because when you pull them together, you want that uh, those two vertices in the middle to connect. Okay, now I'm going to select all the top vertices, all the extrusions that I just made. and I'm going to apply it to that uh, second material. Uh, now I'm going to go into top view. I'm going to use my edge select tool. I'm going to select the top two edges and hit scale Y zero and that'll flatten that out and do the same with the bottom. And now I'm going to scale them out a little bit uh, basically, all I'm trying to do is create the same distance um, around that the uh, the edge loops uh, in the middle. Now I'm going to select these two vertices and pull them towards the center and let them merge with the mirror side. And I'm going to select the whole right side and delete those vertices. Now I'm going to select this row of faces and this row of faces. Make sure to leave the row in between uh, unselected and I'm going to hit I to inset and I'm just going to adjust the depth so that they, uh, they sink in a little. And then I want to check select outer. Now I'm going to apply these faces to that first material. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to face select and select the, the other two rows of faces and just hit I. And these settings in the uh, inset tools don't default to uh, back to zero, so they're already where you want them. And I'm going to assign those to that material as well. Those are the faces in particular that you don't want to uh, have to go back and select again later to apply your material. 
I'm going to select everything and hit W and then remove doubles because sometimes with the mirror modifier, it, um, if, if you're not careful, you can end up with double vertices. Now I've added the array modifier and I'm going to change the relative offset from X to Y. And just that easily you have a pretty cool low poly, uh, you know, gothic style cathedral archway and it has that detail that runs up through the middle. Now I'm going to add a cube and in edit mode just scale it around the arches to fill in all of those open areas. It can be pretty challenging modeling architectural structures, particularly if you're trying to keep them low poly. Um, but it's also kind of fun modeling things low poly. It's sort of a challenge within itself. And, uh, and it's always easier to, or at least in most cases, it's easier to add geometry later than to have to take it away if you need a low poly model. So now I've added some windows and, and some extrusions for a little bit of extra detail and applied the textures to those two materials and set up the lighting. And now I'm going to bake this whole texture out so that it can be used in the game engine. And here's the final result. It's a lot of fun getting to create environments because you get to, to see the, the concept or the idea become something physical that, or at least, you know, it's not really physical, you can't touch it, but it's something that you can interact with and something that you can see. And it's just a really cool process. I think if I were to ever work in the uh, game industry, it would probably be, um, you know, designing environments. It's a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. I hope that, you know, someone finds it useful. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.